Hi guys. It is an unbelievably, spectacularly gorgeous day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, in what's left of the former paradise of South Austin, Texas, on this gorgeous but breezy Saturday morning, November 17, 2018. I hope this wind is not going to affect the uh, quality of this video. So anyway, uh, your old collapsitarian here, you know, I keep running into conflicts with that other channel and originally another version of this story was going to be the story that that other guy on that other channel covered, a mainstream media version of this very story, which is being reported on the mainstream media today, the story I'm getting ready to read. But of course, uh, alert listener Daniel Geary has found, amazingly enough, imagine that, that uh, Daniel, who is just pretty much, I've assigned Daniel to supply me uh, with the stories, has found a, a non-mainstream media story that so far outshines the mainstream media coverage that I'm just going to go with this on Collapse Chronicles today and make a few com. I I'm going to save my own comments till the end. So if you want to hear what this old collapsitarian has to say about this whole story, you can skip ahead or whatever. Or hopefully s stay with me. Uh, but we're going to talk uh, about the most immediate threat of collapse, which is, of course, World War III, which is rapidly building on this planet. And this is from a website, the Greenville, G-R-E-A-N-Ville Post. Whoa, look out, little dog. Don't you fall off your chair. Would you? Are you collapsing? Are you collapsing in your little made-in-China plastic chair? <clears throat> and this is, this is kind of one of these lefty socialist uh, groups. And this is their coverage of the story. <clears throat> bipartisan panel, meaning bipartisan, meaning Republicans and Democratic uh, Democrats on this panel agree the U.S. must prepare for, quote, horrendous, devastating, close quote, war with Russia and China. And this comes from a writer named Andre Damon. <clears throat> Take it away, Andre. A bipartisan commission appointed by Congress issued a lengthy report this week backing the Pentagon's plans to prepare for a, quote, great power war against Russia, China, or both, making it clear <coughs> that the Trump administration's belligerent policies are shared by the Democratic Party. And uh, Chris Hedges has had many rants on this about this enduring myth that the Democratic Party uh, is anti-war. Yeah, right. <coughs> safe, <coughs> safe in the knowledge that its findings will never be seriously reported in the mainstream media. Well, as I just said, it, it is being reported in the mainstream media today, right here on Yahoo News, maybe not quite as in-depth as this story. <coughs> The authors of the new report do not mince words about what such a war will mean. A war between the United States and China, which according to the report might break out within the next four years, will be, quote, horrendous and devastating. The military will, quote, face greater losses than at any time in decades, 
close quote, such a war could lead to, quote, rapid nuclear escalation, close quote, and American civilians will be attacked and likely killed. And then also what the mainstream media is reporting, a, another article that I was batting around is that China, uh, the president of China, had made a statement a couple of days ago telling the Chinese military they needed to start preparing for a major global war. Can we say World War III? <clears throat> Back to, uh, back to this article, and, and I'm going to put the link to this article <coughs> and encourage uh, and encourage you to read this yourself, but I'm just going to keep on going here on this beautiful day. It is impossible to understand anything in American politics without recognizing the fundamental reality this fundamental reality, the events and scandals that dominate political discourse, which make it onto the evening news and into headline news sites and social media feeds, have precious little to do with the, considera the considerations of those who actually make the decisions. The media talking heads play their assigned roles knowing that the most important topics can be discussed only within very circumscribed limits. Those who actually make policy, a select group of high-ranking members of Congress, Pentagon officials and think tank staffers, as well as White House aides, speak an entirely different language among themselves and in publications they know the general public will not read and the media will not seriously report. These people all accept ACCEPT. These people all accept as plain self-evident fact statements that if they ever made the evening news would be dismissed as conspiracy theories. The latest example of such plain speaking comes in the form of a new report published by the National Defense Strategy Commission, a body set up by Congress to assess the Pentagon's new national security strategy issued early this year, which declared that, quote, great power competition, not terrorism, is now the primary focus, close quote, of the U.S. military. And as I say, it's also the focus of the Chinese military, if you're to believe the president of China. <clears throat> the findings of the panel published in a report titled, quote, titled, Providing for the Common Defense, can be summarized as follows. The U.S. military is entirely correct to prepare for war with Russia and China, but the Pentagon, which spends more each year than the next eight largest national military forces on the planet combined, requires a massive expansion in our military spending to be paid for with cuts to bedrock social programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Uh, the report is, in other words, a, a congressional rubber stamp on the Trump administration's military buildup, putting into words what the Congress did in deeds this year when it passed with overwhelming bipartisan report, meaning with complete support of the Democrats, the largest military budget increase since the Cold War. But 
beyond the recognition that the United States should prepare for an imminent, quote, whole of society, close quote, war with, quote, devastating impacts on the American population, the document is a stark warning of another basic reality. The United States could very well lose such a war, which requires, in effect, the military conquest of the entire planet by a country with less than 5% of the world's population. And uh, I will add here that uh, the original story that I was going to cover on that other channel uh, as the story of the day for today was in fact the number one story on Yahoo News uh, last night that the U.S. could very well lose a uh, lose a war uh, against Russia or China, uh, and that was the number one story. And I'm just briefly going to break in here. I'm going to continue reading here. But when I read just the headline of that story, I, you know, I, I smelled a little bit of a, a little bit of a rat. I, I smelled, you know, just the latest military industrial complex teaming up with the mainstream media to get people, you know, to support the single biggest military buildup in, in, in what, 30 or 40 years, the, the single biggest military budget ever, and that's to get people, uh, you know, in fear that uh, to support the build, you know, spending billion, hundreds of billions of dollars of American taxpayer money to line the pockets of the military industrial complex that put every one uh, of these people on this panel in office. Uh, so, the, the, the obvious uh, result of all of this, if you take this report at face value, which I, I, I'm not saying I don't, I don't, but what it is it is just the latest effort of the military-industrial complex propaganda machine to make us believe and make us freak out that America really could uh, lose World War III. Uh, but, but the, you know, the big question is, and I honestly don't know, <coughs> I don't think this is a case of either or. This is a, a case of both and. I do believe uh, th this report at face value th th that America uh, could, could lose the next war. And also, uh, under, while also understanding that this is just the latest successful effort by the military-industrial complex to line their pockets with taxpayers' money. Uh, even though, as it just says, if you add up China and Russia and the next six military budgets on this planet, you add up uh, the top eight but before you get to the military budget uh, uh, of the U.S. So anyway, uh, I, I think this is an, ex a, a, an example of the both and collapse uh, of this planet. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's get back to this. That's enough. Uh, those are the comments I was gonna, gonna add to this, but since I've already added them, let's get back to uh, this story. Where was I? Okay. I'm getting back to the report. The United States quote from the report, the United States, quote, might struggle to win or perhaps lose 
a war against China or Russia, close quote, it declares, these wars would not just be fought overseas, but would likely target the American population. Quote, it would be unwise and irresponsible not to expect adversaries to attempt debilitating kinetic, cyber, or other types of attacks against Americans at home while they seek to defeat our military abroad, close quote. Moving down the report, it adds, quote, should war occur, American forces will face harder fights and greater losses than at any time in decades. It is worth recalling that during the Falklands War, a decidedly inferior opponent, Argentina, crippled and sank a major British warship by striking it with one single guided missile. The amount of destruction a major state adversary could inflict on U.S. forces today might be orders of magnitude higher, close quote. To drive the point home, the report outlines a number of scenarios. Okay, the first involves Taiwan declaring independence from China in 2022, prom pr prompting Chinese retaliation. Quote, the Pentagon informs the president that America could probably defeat China in a long war if the full might of the nation was mobilized, yet it would lose huge numbers of ships and, and, and aircraft as well as thousands of lives in the effort, in addition to suffering severe economic disruptions, all with no guarantee of having decisive impact before Taiwan was overrun, but avoiding that outcome would now require absorbing horrendous losses. And, and, and that is just one uh, of a thousand scenarios, uh, no doubt. But the bottom line, the solution, uh, the report concludes, is a much bigger army funded by consistent multi-year increases in military spending. Quoting the report, there is a need for extraordinary urgency in addressing the crisis of our national defense, close quote. It writes, so what does the Army need? The Army needs, quote, more armor, long-range fires, engineering, and air defense units. All right. The Air Force needs more stealthy long-range fighters and bombers, tankers, lift capacity, and intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance platforms. The nuclear forces need more nuclear missiles, and so on and so forth. To pay for all this, social services are to be gutted. Again, quoting the report, quote, mandatory entitlement programs drive spending growth, close quote. The report complains demanding that Congress address these programs, which include Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. It warns that, quote, such adjustments will undoubtedly be quite painful, close quote. Yes, uh, I bet about as painful as a nuclear missile being rammed up your ass. And finally, all of society must be mobilized behind the war effort. 
and this is where the mainstream media was coming in last night with the number one story on the planet in the in the mainstream media striking fear into all our hearts that we could lose this war this is what they're talking about here as all of society must be mobilized behind the war effort a quote whole of nation approach must be adopted including quote trade policy science technology engineering and math education close quote everything from private corporations to ac academic institutions might be brought to bear enlisting the various challenges to the United States fighting and winning a war against Russia or China, none of the distinguished members of the committee arrived at the seemingly obvious conclusion that maybe the United States should not fight such a war. But in this they represent the overwhelming consensus within American policy circles. In his last days, Adolf Hitler was reported to have declared over and over again that if the German nation could not win the Second World War, it did not deserve to exist. The American ruling class is entirely committed to a course of action that threatens the obliteration of not only much of the world's people, but of the American population itself. And then, of course, they have to throw in a little bit of socialism in the closing uh, paragraph. This is not the madness of individuals but the insanity of a social class that represents an outlived and bankrupt social order, capitalism, and an equally outlived political framework, the nation-state system, and it can only be opposed by another social force, the world working class, whose social interests are international and progressive and whose very existence depends on opposing the megalomaniacal war aims of American capitalism. Anyway, uh, you can uh, draw your own conclusions about that. Uh, about that last paragraph in this whole story, uh, but, but the 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 bottom line uh, for for anyone still paying taxes is that you better believe uh, with bipartisan support, uh, particularly with those uh, Dems in uh, Congress, that the American military budget will continue to balloon. There is a, that is a coyote right there, right there, 100 feet from uh, us, there is a coyote licking his chops. And Sancho Panza, if I let him off this chain, would go running down there to go meet that coyote. You see why you're on the chain? Uh, it's a jungle out there. Anyway, I better take my little dog you see that coyote, don't you? I better take my little coyote bait uh, and get inside. And then we're heading to the Optimus Club Christmas tree lot to look at the new crop of dead trees that I'm getting ready to sell for the Optimus Club. And then we're off to Target to buy Sancho Panza a Santa Claus outfit to celebrate the collapse of global industrial civilization while we still can on this absolutely beautiful day. And I suggest you get out there 
and enjoy it while you still can, but do not get eaten by a coyote in the process. Bye, guys. No, you're not going down there. There's a puppet. I'm going to go get that coyote.